Okay, we live and go ahead. Hey, hey, and welcome to the Prelude for the Rebirth Ball. Today we have an amazing group of trans men here, and we're going to have some conversations about ballroom. My name is Barosa Balenciaga, and I will be the moderator for the panel. Uh, if we could start off over here with Buddha, if you could tell us your name, uh, a little bit about yourself, uh, what house you walk with. My name is Buddha Balenciaga. I walk with the house of Balenciaga. I've also walked at the Monty for a quick second. Um, I'm legendary for much realness. I've been a uh, trans man for a couple of years now, but I feel that ballroom is a space for everybody all genders. Yeah. Hello, I'm Alex Garcon. Um, I've been a Garcon since 2015. Um, I joined the house by accident, actually. I went with <laughs> I went with someone else to a meeting and they thought I was a little butch queen and when they uh, whispered and realized I wasn't, I was like instantly in the house. So that's how that happened. Um, I have yet to walk a ball and I've been in the house since 2015, but they decided to use my advocacy um, and put me on the professional side of the house. Um, so that's what I do. What's up everyone, D. Jamel, ex Balenciaga, ex Amazon, now 007. Um, I started off walking Butch Realness in probably 2008, 2009. Uh, joined Balenciaga in 2010, started walking Trans Man Realness. Um, I have dibbled and dabbed, jumped in and out uh, for my own personal reasons, ballroom, kind of changing. Um, <coughs> but um, I'm more so interested in seeing what we can do now to bring this up to the ballroom. Hi, I'm Danny Gucci. I walk with the house of um, I started walking ball since the house opened. I'm actually the first trans man of the house. Um, yeah. I'm here to help make a change in ball uh, for the trans men. I'm Sean Ebony. I'm an icon. I've been walking since 1988. Oh, no. um, um, when I started walking that category was male illusionist. We walked into Butch Realness. Um, and I, I, I'm hoping that during this discussion we can clear up that whole folks believe that butch realness evolved into trans man realness, and that's not the case. They're two separate categories, and um, I think that leads to a lot of confusion. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave you there for now. Good morning, everybody. I'm Chucky. Um, I am a 007, like a couple of people. I'm an ex um, West Coast father of West. I came into the ballroom in late 99, early 2000s. Um, I walked a couple of times, just not fully out because I didn't feel like the category was for me. I never identified as a butch or a lesbian or anything like that. Um, so then when the categories changed back in 2003, 2004, I started walking. You guys for all your intros. I think let's start back on this way and then head back around. Avinka, um, why did you join Ballroom and uh, you know what's made you kind of stick around in Ballroom? Well, I originally joined Ballroom um, because I seen it as an escape, a place where I felt like there was people that looked like me and were like me and an alternate place for like family. Um, and you know, to grow, like I said, and grow with it with time as things just made me they thought I identified as other things and as you got to learn, I was like, oh, it's not a crowd for me right now um, because y'all know a lot of things center around the women. Um, so that's what they've seen and that's what they knew. And I, being an intersex individual, you know, people put me at the woman's side of the spectrum. So I identify as a male, so I can get to stuff that I'm supposed to be doing. That's what I'm saying, that they sure want. to help me identify who I was. Like, um, back in 87, 88, there wasn't a thing for, uh, there wasn't this, this identifiable place that you can say, okay, yeah, you're trans, and this is what you need to do, and 
this is how you need to do it. Um, so finding ballroom gave me like this family that kind of gave me the luxury, if you will, to kind of explore who I was um, and to find it for myself. It also gave me the courage to do that. So I uh, you know, was able to create some lifelong relationships with people that walk with me on this journey. Um, the one thing about ballroom was that it identified me at first, right? Because to your point, I never identified as female. But coming into ballroom, it was like, well, you look like this, you act like this, you're a butch. And that's the label that that that, that they gave me initially. Um, and you know, initially you go with it because you found this soft landing, if you will, right? To kind of it kind of puts a, a, a point on how you feel, but not quite, right? So so you rock with it and you continue to explore feelings and, and, and stuff. Why I stay? Um, I stay because um, as a trans masculine person, uh, I think we, no, no, I know we have something to say in Warhol. I know there's a place for us in Warhol. And I, I think as one of the vets in Warhol, it's my, my duty to make sure that we carve out this, 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 this comfortable safe space. And I use safe loosely because there's no real way to say I'm to guarantee safety, right? But, but to, to have a space that we can also come in and play around. Oftentimes when you hear trans, we talk about our trans sisters, and even in ballroom that's the case. You talk about, you think trans and you think about your trans sisters. And I want us to kind of um, first acknowledge that we do that, um, and, and then um, challenge it. It's enough of us that have been doing this for enough years to be able to say, ah, why you, why y'all doing that? Like, like, why my category last? Why it's only one? And why you must do my shit? And why you do like we have the opportunities now, I think, and enough of us have a significant enough voice to be able to say, Y'all gotta stop playing with us, right? And I think that's why I say Yes, as a trans woman myself, I mean I was honored to be uh, moderating a panel uh, uh, full of men that I admire in ballroom and absolutely uh, can acknowledge the fact that yes, uh, as trans women often we are given um, you know the light there and, and, and not just in in ballroom often, sometimes outside of ballroom as well. And it's very, very important to have these conversations. That's why I'm so happy that you and Julie asked me to be here today. We're happy that you came. So thank you. Danny, before, uh, before you go, because I don't want to touch on it as well. And I also can ask that question before I ask her, which goes with what Sean just said too as well. When I started actually walking, walking, um, I started off by just doing movies, right? Yeah. Until the thing was, I was killing it, right? And then when the word got out that I'm a trans man, it became, oh, you can't walk in these categories yeah. anymore. So then me, you know, like I said, I identified it as the I in the TGI is the masculine part. I then was like, you know, it's not fair for me to then walk in these trans men either. Yeah. Because that's different. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole different category. It's like butch, trans, bitch, that we're all, we're all different. Because now you're judging me on my beard or my surgery type of thing. So I don't walk because now I break into other Every day, because I don't really want to specify every day which queen I would want for every day category right. to, to show and to break that, to show like we need to break down as trans people. So, yeah, I don't know. No, you're absolutely yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I know we're going to go into it, but I just, just like, I guess. Um, why did you join Ballroom and, and why, why did you stay? I joined Ballroom to find myself at first, and I feel like. You know, when I first came into my transition, I came into ballroom as, as a butch lesbian, and I was starting my transition. So I really wasn't sure like where I fit in, like within the LGBTQ plus community. And um, that's what kind of made me come to ballroom. Um, being in ballroom now, um, I've definitely met a lot of my chosen family. Um, I enjoy walking the balls, I enjoy being myself. And I enjoy bringing that trans man rep representation to my house and to our community. And you know, to top that, you know, I'm also an advocate, an activist, and um, you know, I'm all about having us heard and having us be seen, and um, in any way possible, just you know, raising the bar. Um, for myself, so 2007, I was stationed in Fort Bragg, um, North Carolina, in Fayetteville. North Carolina and my partner, who was like the star of the Little City, Bowl Fan, Little Cooper City, um, had introduced me to Baldwin, you know, showing me clips and things like that, and showed me trans man rooms. And 
this was my first time not only seeing like you know balls, but my first time also seeing trans men. So you know, there's two things happening there. And I'm like, well, for one, I need that. That's <laughs> what I need. In fact, this was Marquise Bojaga, the first trans guy that I got to see. Um, and so it put a whole other perspective of who I could be for myself. And then also it made me more interested in being involved in instead of me just support my partner, I could also contribute and participate. So I started with that. Now, I technically left Ballroom, and I left Ballroom for some of the reasons that some of you guys have stated. Like that flight became exhausting. And at the time that I was most active, it wasn't as much support around trans masculine people. Um, and, and some of the flight just was not even worth it. It wasn't worth it at all. And I have a whole real life to live. And folks expecting too much of you, and I think I'm back to stay away from it. Okay, so like I stated, ballroom kind of found me. Um, but the reason why I actually joined the house is because just the sense of, of family. Um, at that particular time, um, I was estranged a little bit from my biological family, so it was it was filling a void there. Um, so that was that's why I joined. Um, the reason why I stayed. Let, let me back up a little bit. The reason why I've never walked the ball under Garcon is because I felt I didn't want to walk, really. I didn't want to walk. I was like, okay, I have a fire sneaker, sneaker game. I got some badass stuff. Why I gotta just walk, really? You know. So it was my way of, of kind of like taking a stand. Like mm -hmm. I'm not walking that. So, you know, and they were like, okay, but we want you in this house, so we're gonna put you, you know, on the professional side because we value what you bring. Yeah. So, um, and that's another reason why I stay because I love the fact that our, this family is about community and about advocacy. So it's like, I don't have two separate lives. It just combines to the life I live every day. That's why I grew up. You can walk to see it. Not at my house. Yeah. I'm talking about my house, I'm not talking about Main Street. Oh. I'm talking about the Main Street. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's understandable from the house that have a lot of rules. Yeah. Um, but that's why I joined um, Ballroom and stayed in Ballroom was a sense of family. We being of West Indian descent, um, they don't even know what homophobic or transphobic means, but now because we're blessed with chemicals, we just get it wrong. Um, there was no place that was safe with, or without judgment. And um, I found a place that wasn't just a roof over my head sometimes. It was guidance. It was uh, competition and bettering yourself outside of ballroom and work, school, all of that. And that's what I really appreciate about that. And then when you get to travel, had to meet women, had to meet other trans guys, <laughs> and talk, and it, it was something that I didn't get anywhere else. But the main thing was, before ballroom, I didn't know what trans was. Um, I was out there, I had like guns in my face. I was very proud of being um, a lesbian. I didn't know what Butch was. That's when I was introduced to what Butch was. They just told me, come to the house meeting. Uh, I didn't even strap my chest. I was embarrassed. I didn't even know what it was. Um, but I learned walking Butch really. You said showing up? Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I started to flirt. <laughs> um, but I learned how to be safer. And it wasn't just telling everybody, um, hey, this is the pronoun that you're supposed to be calling me. That's none of their business. And then I learned what being a Butch person was. Or a trans man. I saw. I saw Sean. I saw Reese and him battling Reese Tuscany, and I saw all the Tuscany footage back in the day. I love that, and that's why I stay. So something you just spoke about is better yourself um, in and outside of ballroom. And my next question is: uh, Some of you guys are icons, legends, and, and people in ballroom know. Every, you know all of your accomplishments, but I know that several of you work with different organizations outside of ballroom as well, and help community and change. So, if you want to start, Sean, um, um, sorry, Alex, 
Sorry. 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 Sor
to Atlanta, Georgia in May and open Destination Tomorrow South. In addition to those things, I'm a grant maker for, for the Gilead Transcend Community Impact Fund. We won a million dollar fund. First time ever that black trans people were, at, were, were given the opportunity to self-manage and gift out money to our community on a national level. If I was anybody else, every time I walked into a fucking room, that would celebrate it. So if we're having this discussion around ballroom, we have to have the discussion around why those accomplishments are not celebrated. That's right. Well, can we take a moment to celebrate him right yeah. now? Yeah. 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 Anytime you walk in and you see content around LGBT language and verbiage, that's also me. Yes. And I don't run around and scream about all of the things that I do, but I'm a consultant and the ED, a uh, grant maker, and all of those shit. And it's based on me wanting to give back to our community. I hire within the community, and I get yeah. shit for that. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Got I went from a cubicle to 27 employees in two different states. And I still get shit from people. Like, it's ridiculous, but okay. Well, we're gonna have haters. Well, well, you know that you're doing something right. Was that, 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 that you that? Yes, it was. It was a little over, but we're, we're gonna allow it because you were killing it. But you're allowed. You're allowed. Yeah. Omega. My bad. <laughs> I'm Omega Church. you may want me to be. I'm not that little girl because I never was that girl type of thing. Um, and showing people that, you know, like, like you said, you know, for those of us who live stealth and or you know, something like there's no such thing as you know, to you when you live stealth with me. Because I feel like I live a stealth life, you know, as well. Um, but it's also, I'm a, I feel like I'm an abolitionist, you know what I'm saying? So there is no such thing as being stealth. So I know we're running a little bit low on time, so I'm gonna ask each one of you guys if there's anything you can tell the trans masculine community out there. Um, a lot of us on the stage, I mean, I'm a millennial, so we all that, are a little bit older. So if there's any kind of advice we wanna give back to community, can we end on something that you would maybe wanna tell the trans masculine folk out there right now? Um, if it's a word of advice, if it's you know, resources, anything that you wanna say. I'll start with you. Uh, dream big, don't let anybody tell you who you are, what you can't do, make a way, blaze a new path, and don't let anybody stop you. I think what I would say is to never let anybody put you in a box. Like, you're able to be whatever you want to be at whatever particular time you want to be. If tomorrow you decide you want to be something else, then do that. Live your life authentically to make yourself happy and don't worry about anybody else. Because at the end of the day, you know, you came here by yourself, you're gonna go by yourself. I definitely would say don't let anyone define what your realness is to you, what it looks like, how you express it, um, how it makes you feel, even your sexuality. Um, sexuality and gender identity are two separate things. I know there's some things that that's one thing that a lot of trans guys struggle with, you know, presenting yourself in a masculine way while also having physical attractions or different things in your life. Feel free to be yourself as everybody else does. My advice would be to live yourself, live your life on a 
unapologetically and always be a voice and be the change, like define that um, in and out of ballroom. Always be true to yourself. I think mine would be, um, we, we give this advice, right? I think folks have to really understand what that means, right? Like, like, I think once you understand that you create the life that you want, then all of the things that we just said, folks and actions make happen. But it's a mental shift. Your, your mind has to shift around the fact that I am able to create the life that I want. Nobody in ballroom, nobody, no, no, no bio family, no chosen family, nobody else can give you the things that you know you deserve. So you begin to shift the way you think about you and what you want, and you start to dream. I think somebody over here said dream big. But what does that actually mean? Right, because to me, dreaming big could be like, I got Jay-Z money. <laughs> that's my dream, that's the last. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's it, right? And to other people, it may be something else. We have to recognize where people are and give them the space to expand and grow in their dreams and create that life with themselves. Because once one thing happens, then uh, and, and you, you understand that you manifested that shit. You, you, you planted the seeds that are now growing. What other seeds are you going to plant? I just want y'all to plant seeds. I just want to tell people that, you know, degrees get you cheese. And what I mean by that is you got to educate yourself. You got to know who you is, learn who you is, and what that what you want for yourself. Don't let nobody tell you what that look like. You feel me? Because having a dick don't make you a man. Having a dick just makes you a dick. You feel me? So <laughs> smile and know that, you know? Oh, God yeah. loves you. <laughs> I love you. And most importantly, you should love your motherfucking self. That's what I live. Okay. Wait, I think we should end on that. Fellas, <laughs> <laughs> give yourself a round of applause because it's amazing. We have a lot of fun.